Is dinner ready yet? As I'm preparing dinner, my husband chimes in. Yes, yes, I'm on it. He seems to be relaxing, watching TV in the living room. Hey, coffee. All right. Upon hearing that, I turn off the stove and make some coffee. It's a scene that hasn't changed for years. But lately, I've been questioning this life. My name is Mary. I'm 50 and have been married for 27 years. My husband is four years older and was my boss at work. Back in the day, many women quit their jobs when they got married. I was a secretary, so making coffee and photocopying were part of my job. My husband, being the boss, naturally expected the same at home. We have a son and a daughter. Our son works in IT, and our daughter is in the food industry. They've moved out, and with the kids grown, I've started thinking about doing something new. Encouraged by my daughter, I started attending cooking classes. But I felt awkward asking my husband for money, so I took a part-time job at a supermarket. It's been a while, and things have changed, but trying something new was exciting. Thanks to my tech-savvy son, I was already comfortable with computers, so I was ready for modern office work. Thank you to my son. It felt empowering to earn my own money, even if it was just part-time. I used that money for my cooking classes, and my social circle expanded rapidly. Improving my cooking was fun, but interacting with people from different generations was even more enjoyable. Where are my clothes and towel? After dinner, as I'm cleaning up, my husband yells from the living room, They're ready. He gets up without a word and heads to the bathroom. I'm the one who prepares his clothes and towels. It's not that it's painful, but it's disheartening when he takes it for granted. When I'm sick, he does nothing for me. He even asks about meals and clothes. Our kids are the ones who take care of me and scold him, but he doesn't listen. Life has been like this for years, but my mindset began to change when I started working part-time. When I told my husband I wanted to take cooking classes, he said it was fine as long as I didn't neglect the housework. I had no issue with that. But when he said, Your cooking hasn't improved. After just one class, I was puzzled. If one class could make such a difference, businesses wouldn't succeed. That's when I realized he probably didn't like me starting something new. He seemed to look down on me as a homemaker who can't do anything else. Once I realized that, I began to wonder if I could spend the rest of my life with a man who only talks about food, showers, and coffee. Our kids have moved out, and it's just the two of us. The house should feel more spacious, but it feels cramped. Hey. My husband calls out to me while I'm in the kitchen. He hasn't called me by my name in decades. I look up, and he's pointing to a corner of the room. If you're going to neglect the housework because you're busy having fun, you might as well leave. He always said I could leave if I wanted to. Back when I was raising the kids, I had no job and never even considered leaving. But now, things are different. For the first time, I talked back. If you're concerned about the cleaning, the vacuum is right there. Why don't you do it yourself? Suddenly, my husband starts to get angry. How dare you say that to me, the man who supports this household. I'm done with you. With that, he storms out of the living room. I sigh. After a while, I hear the front door open. It seems he's gone out. All this talk about being the wife and supporting the household, and you think about it, it's just prejudice. He probably never expected me to talk back. After a while, he returns. Suddenly, he thrusts a piece of paper into my hands. Sign this, and you can leave. I received a divorce application form from my husband, already filled out. Divorce just for speaking up once? 
But then I think, if that's what he wants, maybe it's for the best. Still, I say, let me think about it, and take the papers to the bedroom where he's not around. I lose track of time, and before I know it, it's already evening. Just as I'm thinking about going to bed, I hear him shout, What about dinner? How can he demand dinner from someone he just handed divorce papers to? He even opens the bedroom door to check on me. <sighs> I sigh again. If we divorce, who's going to make your meals? He responds, Yeah, you're right. Life would be inconvenient without you, Mary, so hurry up and make dinner. I have issues with everything he's saying, but I know he'll keep asking about dinner, so I heat up some leftovers and serve them. The next day, he comes home in a surprisingly good mood. When I take his bag and jacket, I notice an unfamiliar scent. Is it women's perfume? But I decide not to press the issue. If he's cheating, I'll gather evidence and divorce him. I've had my suspicions before, but this is the first time I've thought about investigating him. Sure enough, I quickly find messages and photos, evidence of his affair. A month later, things take a sudden turn. I come home from my cooking class to find the home phone ringing off the hook. It's the police saying my husband has been in an accident and is in the hospital. He was supposed to be at work, but the location of the accident is in a completely different direction. Suspicious, I rush to the hospital. Just to be safe, I also call our son and daughter to come. When I get to the hospital room, it's definitely him. According to the police, the woman in the passenger seat didn't make it. It wasn't a scam, but hearing that a woman was with him made me lose all concern for him. Dad was supposed to be at work, right? So, why was he there? And with another woman? I nod at my daughter's words. The kids seem to understand right away that their father was cheating. Either way, there's nothing we can do if he doesn't regain consciousness. There's a chance he might never wake up, and even if he does, he'll likely be paralyzed from the waist down. Everything else is uncertain. Three days later, he wakes up. When I get the call and arrive at the hospital, my father-in-law and mother-in-law are already there. When my husband was taken to the hospital, I had contacted his parents, father-in-law and mother-in-law. But I didn't feel like waiting for them so I never met them at the hospital. They arrived after we had left, apparently staying by my husband's side while he was unconscious. The moment mother-in-law saw me, she started yelling. Mary, where have you been? Mother-in-law has never liked me since I married her son. We rarely see each other because we live far apart, but she always has something to complain about when we do meet. I expect to hear something like this, especially since I left my unconscious husband at the hospital. You're a terrible daughter-in-law, not being by your husband's side when he's fighting for his life. Father-in-law joins in, echoing mother-in-law's sentiments. I couldn't help but say, You're right. I think so, too. Normally a wife would stay by her husband's side in a situation like this, but I've given up on that role. My husband finally speaks up, surprising father-in-law and mother-in-law with my attitude. I'll be in the hospital for a while, so bring me some clothes and towels. Just come at a set time every day. He says as if it's a given. As I'm contemplating how to respond, he adds, You're my wife. You should be devoted to me for life. Mother-in-law chimes in. It's so sad that he'll be paralyzed. From now on, you'll have to care for him, Mary. My husband nods. Exactly. That's what a wife does. I look at them and say, What are you talking about? I have nothing to do with this anymore. What? My husband, father-in-law, and mother-in-law all look at me. That's right. I'm not your wife anymore. And you have some nerve. Cheating on me? And then getting into an accident. You told me you were working, but you were actually on vacation with your mistress. Unbelievable. 
I don't know how much father-in-law and mother-in-law knew, but they should understand now. Then father-in-law says something outrageous. What's the big deal about cheating once or twice? You should be proud to have such a popular husband. It's the mother-in-law who says things that are out of line. Just then, the door to the hospital room opens. What you're saying is terrible, Grandpa and Grandma. It's my daughter, with my son behind her. They had apparently heard everything. Now everyone's here. I start laying it all out. You started cheating on me three years ago with the wife of an executive at your company. I can't believe you'd have an affair with her. A woman who was riding with my husband died. I had learned specific information while communicating with the woman's husband and the police. My husband's face visibly changes. Did you think you could have an affair, cause an accident, and nothing would come out? I've known for a while now, and I have all the evidence. I'll be consulting with a lawyer now. My husband starts to panic. Wait, what do you mean by lawyer? I mean exactly that. I'll be seeking compensation for your cheating and harassment. What am I supposed to do now? My husband, as always, is only concerned about himself. I've stopped worrying about him. I've been treated like a housekeeper by my husband, whose catchphrases have always been food, shower, and coffee. After the affair and the accident, I lost all interest in him. Luckily, I already had the divorce papers pre-filled by him. So I headed straight to the courthouse to file for divorce. That's why I won't be taking care of you or doing anything for you anymore. I'm not your wife. My son and daughter nod in agreement. I'm glad Mom finally decided to divorce Dad. My son says. And that's the end of it. As I'm about to leave the hospital room, leaving my pale-faced husband behind, mother-in-law frantically blocks my way. You can't possibly think this divorce will be approved. You'll be taking care of him for the rest of your life, understand? I look at her and say, I don't understand. What are you going to do then? Who will help him shower and go to the bathroom? You're good for nothing but caregiving, so just do it. I keep a straight face and say, Why don't you do it all, mother-in-law? Mother-in-law falls silent. So I add, Please stop pushing me onto what you don't want to do. Good luck taking care of your son. Father-in-law, who had been acting like this had nothing to do with him, looked puzzled. What happens next is not my concern. As you told me to, I'll be leaving that house. I leave the hospital room with my children. I've rarely ever spoken up before, but today I said what I needed to say. I return home feeling refreshed and start preparing to move. I moved in with my daughter, who kindly said, Why don't we live together? I returned to my part-time job that I had taken a break from and started attending cooking classes again. Now, wherever I go, people say, Mary, you seem so much happier. Well, I used to be a housekeeper who didn't get paid, so it's natural that I was down. Now, my horizons have broadened, my social circle has expanded, and every day is enjoyable. Just as I declared, I claimed compensation for my ex-husband's infidelity and harassment, and made sure to divide our assets fairly. By the way, the affair came to light even to the executive whose wife was involved, so my ex-husband was also sued for compensation from that end. Though he couldn't have been rehired, under a disability quota, he chose to resign after the affair and the accident became public knowledge. Mary, please come back. I get a desperate call from my ex-husband. Without me saying anything, he starts talking. Dad and Mom have been pushing the caregiving onto each other, and Mom finally left yesterday. Our family is done. Hearing his pathetic voice, I say, you really think I'd come back to that? I may have married you, but I lost the will to serve you a long time ago. You got by 
just demanding food, showers, and coffee. Maybe if you'd said thank you once in a while, things would have been different. You took everything for granted. My ex-husband is speechless on the other end of the phone. Besides, hearing my name from you after all these years doesn't make me happy. I've got plenty from the asset division and compensation, so I don't need you anymore. If you keep bothering me, I'll go to the police. He might have really thought I'd come back, but I'm independent now. I was looking for new work because my part-time job wasn't enough, and I found out a cooking class instructor was looking for a partner. The instructor is elderly and doesn't understand computers, so everything is done on paper. I immediately offered to help, using the internet to recruit students and share updates about the cooking class. All thanks to my son, who taught me how to use a computer. Then I get a message from him. Dad called me the other day. I told him I can't trust him and won't help her lend him money. Oh, and he's not invited to my wedding. My son, who has grown up so much, is getting married in two months. He occasionally comes to me for cooking lessons, promising not to turn out like his father. My daughter watches and says, Big Brother's here again. We've always been like this. Our family gatherings never included my husband. In fact, he seemed to exist just to boss me around and make my life difficult. Since he's been gone, I've been able to live a fulfilling life, and I'm content.